We are in section 6.3 where we're going to solve proportions that include more than one term in either the denominator or numerator position. Um, in section 6.2, we talked about having a variable, just, just one term, in either the numerator or the denominator. So we could solve these um, proportions three different ways. And we, uh, we did that for you um, yesterday, so or in 6.2. So here's just some of the ways that you can solve it. So if you took a look at the first one here, where I have 3 fourths equals x over 8. It says you can solve the proportion mentally by saying, OK, I know that if I multiply this by 2, I'm going to get 8. So that means I have to multiply this by 2 here, which means x equals 6. You can solve it by setting it up as an equation, such as using the cross product. So that means if you're going to set it up as an equation, you're going to multiply this, which gives me 10p. And then this equals 16 times 45, which gives me 720. And then simply just dividing both sides by 10, which makes the equation p equals 72. That's the probably the most likely one that we've done, and that's probably the the one that we've had the most success with. Uh, the last one is you can solve proportions by using the inverse property of multiplication. So essentially, since we have x over 12, we can eliminate the 12 by multiplying both sides by its reciprocal, which is 12 over 1 which then crosses out this 12 here, which just leaves me with x on that right-hand side, then all I have to do is, well, I can cancel out the 12 and the 8. I can divide the 8 by 4, which gives me 2. And I can divide the 12 by 4, which gives me 3. And essentially, I just took 9, or 3 times 3, which gives me 9, and then 1 times 2, which gives me 2. So x in this case would essentially equal 9 over 2 or 4.5 okay but what we're talking about is we're going to use essentially we're going to use the cross products to help us solve this particular equation when it has uh, more than one term in either the numerator and the denominator. The x plus 5 is what we're talking about. It has two terms in there. It's got x and it's plus 5, so it has an operation involved. So when we're dealing with that, this, this portion right here, when we do the cross product, stays the same. We're still going to take 54 and multiply it by 18, which gives me 900 and 72. Again, this is from taking 54 and multiplying it by 18. And we're going to make it into an equation, so we're going to equals, and then we're going to use the distributive property from this multiplication sign. So I'm going to take 36, and I'm going to multiply it by x plus 5. Now this is where the distributive property comes in. I'm going to rewrite this 972. It equals, and I'm going to go here, multiply these two terms, it gives me 36x. I have a plus sign here, so I get plus. And I'm going to take 36 and multiply it by 5, which gives me 180. Now what I have is a algebraic equation from what we had in previous chapters. This, this is just now our basic two-step equation. So now essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract both sides by 180. So I can cancel that out. So 972 minus 180 gives me 792 equals 36x. Now that I got to this point, we look like it looks like what we did with the proportions with just one term. So now I'm just going to divide both sides by 36, and then x equals 22. Okay. 
So just taking a look at some more examples, I have 39 over x plus 7 equals 21 over 7. Again, I'm going to do the cross product, so that gives me 21 multiplied by x plus 7 equals 39 times 7, which gives me 273. I'm going to use the distributive property here, so I'm going to multiply this, so it gives me 21x plus 21 times 7, which is right here, which gives me 147 equals 273. So now I'm going to subtract 147 to both sides. So now i got 21x here equals uh, 273 minus 147. That gives me 126. Make that 7 better. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 21. So I'm going to divide both sides by 21. And x equals 6. And again, if you didn't feel like that was correct, you could always plug it back into the original proportion to see if it holds true. Let's take a look at this one. I have 15 minus x over 45 equals 15 over 75. So I'm, again, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by these two values. So I got 75. I'm going to multiply by 15 minus x. And then it's going to equal 45 times 15, which gives me 675. Now I'm going to use the distributive property. So I'm going to take 15, or 15 times 75 which gives me 1,125 minus 750x, which then equals 675. I'm going to subtract uh, 1,125 from both sides, which gives me 675 minus... 1125, which gives me a negative 450. And I got negative 75x here from the negative for the minus 75. So now I want to take both sides and divide it by a negative 75. And negative divided by a negative is going to give me a positive, And it is a positive 6. Okay. Last example on this page. Again, we're going to use cross products. So I got 16 multiplied by x minus 8 equals 28 times 20, which gives me 560. Distributive property here, 16x minus 16 times 8, which is 128, equals 560. I'm going to add 128 to both sides. So now I got 16x equals 560 plus 128, which gives me 688. So now if I divide both sides by 16, I get x equals 43. Okay. Last two things on this page or in in this ease, in this lesson is we got a couple story problems. It says you pay $5 at a gas station for three gallons of gas. They're asking you how much would you pay for $12, or for 12 gallons of gas, I'm sorry. How much would you pay for 12 gallons of gas? So if you know that if you do, th for $5, you get three gallons you can write a proportion to say, I don't know how much it's going to cost, but I want to know how much it is for 12 gallons. The same rules apply. We can cross multiply here. Excuse me, 3x. And then it equals 5 times 12, which gives me 60. That means if I divide both sides by 3, x is going to equal 20. So essentially, it's going to cost you $20 for 12 gallons of gas. 
second portion of it, they want to know is how much it is per gallon. Well, that means they want to know how much it is in for one gallon. So we want to find the unit rate. The unit rate, which we talked about in 6.1, is we want to have our denominator to have a value of 1. So to do that, you can either pick the uh, $5 for 3 gallons, or you can do the $20 for 12 gallons. I'm going to just put $5 for 3 gallons and divide both of those, which essentially means that it's going to cost you for 1 gallon of gas $1.67. I just rounded up cheap huh now second problem says you travel 24 miles in six hours while riding a bike it says at this rate how far can you bike in four hours so you know that you're gonna go 24 miles in four hours or six hours I'm sorry they want to know how many miles you're going to go in four hours. Again, same thing applies. Cross multiply. So I got 6x and it equals 24 times 4 which gives you 96. Divide both sides by 6 which gives you x is going to give you 16 miles. The next thing they want to know what is your unit rate and speed so that means that you can either write it as 24 over 6 as the ratio or you can do 16 over 4 still going to give you the value of 4 so basically you're going 4 miles for one hour okay and that is being able to solve proportions with more than one term in either the numerator or the denominator. Hope this helps. Until next time.